So, according to uh, research on the um, from so uh, soil samples in certain portions of the world. So, yeah, quite interesting stuff. But I just heard thunder outside. Oh, I my internet's better not go off. <laughs> I'm oh, so gosh. pissed off. Oh, I might have to dip out occasionally to help with some things because mom can't walk. Her entire leg is swollen. Hey, don't worry. I'll probably have to dip out a couple, every once in a while because I'll have to go blow my nose. So we're we're good, man. I'll be watching everybody in the background. Thumbs yeah. up. That's luck, creepy. That's I damn. don't have a Creeper. choice. Oh, man. <laughs> Creeper. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I wasn't originally planning on running a session today, but I was like, you know, we did skip last week, and I don't have a headache, so as long as my headache doesn't come back, we're okay. So that means, Dolkin... Just a little one, you, you know? You can't, Dolkin, you can't be an asshole today. I mean, you really... You just gotta be quiet the entire time, man. You can't right. fight oh, well, another mean, level okay, 15 bye, everybody. character. <laughs> <laughs> no more level 15 character fighting, Dolkin. You've had enough. Nah, hey, man. He started it. Perfect timing. Now's the time to do it when the DM doesn't really want to fight and doesn't really give a shit. I'm more likely to give you things. Because I'm just so tired. I'm on three I'd hours. I'd like to have a wish sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like to get laid on a regular basis. But guess what? Neither's hey, happening. He didn't say you couldn't stab him with the wish sword. He didn't say he didn't want to have it in his ab. I mean, I, I was being nice. I was assuming that, that, you know, Cameron isn't a masochist. But good to know that Oni-chan whisperer here um, sees her older I brother am. as... He actually, he said it yesterday. He said no, oni He did. He did, too. No, liar. Hey, guess yeah, what? He you know what the great thing about the internet? If there's no video proof, it don't it doesn't exist. It's just like all the stupid shit I did in high school before the internet became big and YouTube blew up. How do you record oxygen? doesn't exist. On video. Oxygen? Oxygen? Yes. You light you light a match in a room and if it lights, you know that it's got enough oxygen in it to uh, light. That's chemical reaction. Whoever is echoing, that's camera. You gotta fix that. <laughs> It's every damn time. Why Cam is it only me? Cameron, are you watching the stream right now? Is that why? No. Oh. I don't know, man. Yeah. I hear everyone echoing. Uh, ain't my problem. Uh, ain't my problem. <sighs> oh, God. And I don't know if Fuka will be here because he's dealing with some personal stuff, so he might show up, he might not. Bro, is he alright? Uh, you can ask him about that. That's his personal business, not mine. I'm oh. just informing you guys. I try to keep certain things, you know. Oh, yeah. Man. So, you can ask well, him if you Well, that's two players okay. down. No. What do you mean two? Where's the Daya other guy? Okay, okay. Daya is kidnapped. Oh, yeah! I remember. I'm here to watch as an omnipresent being, and I will be judging you, so don't mess up. Yeah, you, what you about can... Divis? Divis? Divis is dead. Died. Oh yeah! <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of How tired right now. <laughs> he was the best of us, the nat twenty roller. No. Oh, he had the DM rolling for him. That's why. Uh, I, I don't know. Oh god. Play is like a little bird that follows us around. We don't need any pigeons. It's thundering again. Which is weird, because, yeah, I've got clear skies up here, but it's fucking colder than shit. Although I bet you it's not as cold as uh, Iceland was. Iceland was, was fucking cold. <laughs> yeah. How was it? Did you have fun? It was cold, but it was very pretty. Nice. That picture looked amazing, man. Ugh. I got a whole Google Drive of them. You want to see them? You should, yeah. You should upload a few yeah. more into the into that Send chat. Send us pictures. I mean, I usually do it when I go out hiking, but it's too cold to go hiking nowadays. Ah. I'll put the link in the trips thing. Cool. And yeah, so this won't be a very long session. I'm gonna fully admit that now because I am still not 100, percent and I'm not gonna get myself, you know, dying here just so that way we can run the game. So. That's Speaking all right. Speaking of short sessions, I got yeah. my schedule for hockey on Sundays. Yeah. There's going to be some nights where I'm only going to have like an hour. That's okay. Worst case scenario, I'll kill you off camera. That's fine. Worst case scenario, he's not there and we all die. <laughs> Rest in peace. That has happened, actually. We have had a player have that happen. Um, where he just came back and everyone was dead. Um, so, you know. Me. <laughs> yeah. 
Actually, no, that's Both accurate. Were dead. I don't see a lot of ice. Well, it's um, ice Iceland was named. Know. Greenland's the one that's icy. Iceland is the one that's green. I know. <laughs> God damn it! They named them that joke. to fuck them all. Over. No, they named it that because of the fact that the people who discovered it weren't weren't too bright about the fact that the two existed. Because Iceland was discovered no, first. No offense, Iceland is named geniusly. It keeps all. It makes a great tourist destination, but you don't want to live there because then you think at some point in the year this might get really icy. No. Why? Why wouldn't you want to live in Iceland? I mean, like that's the home of the giants. You know, the ninety-five percent of the strongest people in the world have come from Iceland. Yeah. I think Steal I Iceland. Because I don't care. Yeah. Create well, a super race. Well, you've also got the issue of the fact that uh, marriage and age of consent is like 16, or no, four, I think it's 14 in Iceland. Um, so you do have that, but uh, some of the most, yeah, so the most famous strongmen typically come from Iceland. It's the land of the giants, is what it's called. So, yeah, a little piece of information. But also, hi, Fuka. Fuka! Yeah. Hello. Are you Hi, welcome to our game. <laughs> I hope you stay. Yeah, Fook, I messaged or I put up a message in the other chat if you want to go check that out. Yeah, I saw it and I texted. Okay. Uh gods. What? okay, there we go. Uh, since I can never remember Fuka's name otherwise, and I don't feel like calling him Advil for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> Alright. Oh, well, that sucks. Okay, that makes more sense. Ah, God, my nose. Oh, nothing, I was reading something. And slowly dying from my nose being so stuffed up that I can't breathe. So, you know, normal day, really. Try getting hit in the face. Give me one. Try getting hit in the face? No, I'm not a little bitch. No, no, no. What? In the face, it might clear up the congestion. Okay. I could, <laughs> you know. What? I could also be a normal person and just drink, like, some hot tea or something like that, you know. But good to know. So, Cameron, that when you when I come out to see you one of these days, man, and I find out you're sick, I'm just going to punch you straight in the face. So. Well, no, you have to get so punch. No, no, no. See, Dang, it's just no. I'm gonna just walk up and just punch you right in the nose. That's. Please it's... don't. I have to have something to keep my glasses off, otherwise I'm. Just... Oh, I'll make sure that it's still. You know, I'll, I'll curve it for you. I've been told I'm pretty good with you know just breaking bones in the right per portion. Excuse me. I, I, I don't want to be assaulted or punched. I would just. What about a pepper? Experience? It's only an assault if you call the cops, and to be honest, if I get bored, or if I end up doing it, I don't think you'll be able to. But it's okay. <laughs> I'll just make sure you can't find my apartment. Oh, that's not hard. You can track someone's internet really easily. And yes, that sounds like a dog or a ki uh, cat meowing. Ah, oh, God. Or a cat barking. Cats. I have seen videos of that before. Cats don't Please bark. Yes, they do. As there is a YouTube fact. video of a cat that's making not... dog-like sounds. That's, that's um... not a cat or a dog. That's a chair that really just needs to throw down. <laughs> oh, okay. You could put some tennis balls on it. That might help. No, it's not sliding. It's a rocking. You could still put tennis balls on it. Just wouldn't rock the now. <laughs> I mean, we've got an engineer in the chat. Ask Dolkin. He'll help you out with that. I mean, his is software, I'm guessing, but he should be good with hardware. <laughs> right, with Dolkin? Chairs? Yeah. I made a stool. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me you can't put tennis balls onto a rocking chair to keep it from creaking? Could oil Just it. The Just turn the chair on. oil it. God damn it. Ugh. Yeah, so... We'll start here in a little bit. Like I was saying, though, um, we are going to be doing a short session. I'm probably only going to go for like an hour just because I'm not very healthy um, and I don't feel like dying. Also, make sure everyone uh, get your long rest in so that way your characters heal up. Uh, All right. I better go do that. I mean, now. Zaya probably can't do much. But Zaya, you're rest. fine. You don't need to. Uh, you're you're right, perfect. That, you're all right, full Zaya, health. Zaya, you're already dead. She's not don't dead. Worry. 
She's more alive yeah, than ninety percent of Cameron's characters. Zoom tight, whoever just sneezed. That was me. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. You know I miss brandy already, but if that shit that you know you don't mix liquors. That's that's my piece of advice. Mixing brandy and mead gives you a sore throat apparently. Oh, I need some brandy, goddammit. Well, Fuka, I poured the bottle out. Oh, my boy. You fucking bitch. Yep. Why? All of the liquor that I'm not selling, I poured out, because I'm going fully sober after this. I, as soon as I started drinking on Wednesday, I got the sore throat that wouldn't go away that turned into this goddamn cold. I am not going to get sicker. So I'm you done drinking. to one of us. None of you are of the age to drink. The only person in here is Dolkin that can drink. So I, just, I can use I brandy can pretend... in cooking, though. Uh, you, no, this isn't cooking alcohol. This is uh, actual uh, brandy. Drinking there's, alcohol. Yeah, there's a difference between well, cooking. And... Make... No, you, you... Can give it to me. No. <laughs> no. The, uh, you don't, you're alcoholic in character. We don't need you to be an alcoholic out of character. I'll tell you what, Fel. When you come up at, to Oregon one of these days, I'll get. I'll buy you a bottle of whatever liquor you want for the, your trip. That's Thank fucking favoritism right there. What have... What? Why am I letting her stay and not you? Oh, that's an easy answer, Fuka. You're a pain in the ass that charged me a thousand dollars to pay for all his meals. So... We're as fellow as a woman. <laughs> yeah, okay, you are. I don't eat much. No. no. And Fel's gonna help me hit on chicks, Wait so. a minute. What the fuck did you just say, Fel? <laughs> I'll, oh, I'll just... Da, 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 I'll just da, steal da. the chick. Wait, what? Shit. Wait, I... What, what did you just say before? I don't she doesn't eat, eat much, much anyways. anyways. She doesn't eat much anyways. I eat about one oh. meal a day, so... Oh, What'd you think she said, Fuka? Nothing. I thought I said something completely different. Wow, anyway, Fuka. Continue. Oh, boy. Oh, gosh. I think Fuka's mind is somewhere else today. Um, and I'm the Wait, one that's stoned. Um, I mean... I mean, I'm... you already know my situation, DM. I don't want to hear shit from you. Well, I'm stoned on pseudofedrin, no, which, funny enough, is apparently the ingredient that you use to make I and am. cut meth. Which is why, why even though... Why are you talking about meth? Well, no, I found this out. So, I, uh, I'm taking pseudofedrin, which is something uh, yeah, that you actually I have to get a... Um, I'm going to mute Cameron for a second on my end. Um, so, pseudofedrin, you have to get a... Um, what's it called? Uh, a prescription for it, because it's used in... Like, for junkies, use it to cut meth and make meth. So... I was, uh, I took some, or I just took one pill, and the shit's strong, but I just can't imagine using that to make a drug, because it doesn't have that, uh, same high I would expect for what me I imagine meth is like, although, given that I've never tried the stuff, so. But, yeah, interesting thing, that Oof. that's why, for basic nasal congestion, and this is basically just allergy meds, um, a little stronger than Claritin, that you have to get a prescription from your doctor for. Funny enough. Oh yeah, did you find out what you're allergic to? No, it's not allergies. Uh, the Claritin didn't do a damn thing, so I had a cold, and we, I think it's the building. With the poor air filtration and being in there more often, I think that's what's causing me to get sick. And the fact that there are freshmen, freshmen and sophomores in that building, they're idiots. Because college kids don't take care of themselves. Which bugs me. Be nice if a well, few of them were healthy. They just live off ramen. No, no, in Portland it's not ramen. Um in Portland it's uh was it salads and fruits. Cuz you can get wow. like a you can get a head of lettuce at PSU for free um pretty easily because every uh second Tuesday of the month or second Monday of the month they uh go through and uh do a big open market that you can just go just draw a lottery ticket for and then they call you up and you can take as much as you can carry. So most of the students get like veggies no and fruits sell. there. Get a giant ass backpack. Oh no! I there. have nineteen I, strength. I saw one kid go in there with like seven bag, like grocery, full grocery bags, and walked out with a full thing, and that was his month's groceries. He didn't buy anything else. Jesus. And I mean, himself, go there with wagon, take everything, walk out, leave everyone pissed off. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, PSU is expensive. I mean, we're one of the tops or one of the most expensive colleges in the university. Oh, hey, thanks, Tren, for your bits. Tren just gave me uh, 15 cents. I think that transfers to. Um, but yeah, so wow, he finally gave his two cents on a matter. Uh, you know, still more valued than yours. Um, but yeah, so. 
it's interesting. I mean, I think it's a good thing that PSU does it because there are a lot of starving students. Um, but at the same time, uh, I just really wish that a lot of these students would take better care, care of themselves than actually use the fact that they've got health insurance through the school because they have to pay for it anyways. And just go see the doctor and get some meds for it, whatever they've got, because I'm so tired of getting sick. There's not been a class I've been in yet where there have been people coughing, sneezing, and dying. I'm like, fuck. Or like, last week... Do they, have, do they got, at least have surgical masks or anything nope, around them? Nope, most just... of them don't, no. Um, this is a no, good story. Get the DM a lifetime supply of paper. I've already... Well, oh, I've got uh, a mask already. Um... Because I've got one for in case St. Helens or Mount Hood ever blows. Um, but anyways, <laughs> one of the things that actually happened to me last week on Monday. So we were studying for the test. And I walk in. I'm dressed nicely because I had an interview late that day. And oh my god, the, the str scent of BO. It smelled like some dude just got out of the gym and hadn't showered from the thing. And had an intense sensation. It was so bad. And I... I literally got up and I, cause I knew the kid, who the kid was. Cause as soon as he walked in, the smell just hit everyone like a wall. So of course at the end of class, I walked up to him. I was like, dude, what the hell you reek. And I'm trying over <laughs> here not to die. Like I have a midterm after this. I cannot afford to smell you the entire time. And he, cause we have class, uh, we have the next class together. And he's like, Oh, you know, I just got out of the gym and had run over here. I was like, that's no excuse. Go fucking home and shower. If you come into that classroom, I swear to God, I'm reporting you to facilities because it was, it was bad. I've it smelled worse than the men's locker room. I have never smelled something so foul. Jesus fucking Christ! Like this guy, yeah, it was just some horrendous bo. I mean, I work out hard, but I at least go take a shower afterwards. I don't care if I'm gonna be late for class. I'm not doing that to my fellow students. That's fucked up. You know, have some oh, common decency. Okay. Thank you, Tren. Sounds like me. No, Tren, I don't think you could produce a stench like this. Honestly. Ugh. But, yeah. No. Uh -uh. That kid. And, I mean, the teacher wasn't even bothered by it. But, I, which amazed me while well, the rest of the students are trying not to gag. I was like, I swear to God, if I get blamed for this shit. Because I'm the only other guy in the in that class that's a gym rat. So, I'm like, I know they're going to look at me. And it's like, ugh. Because my hair was all oily that day. Because I didn't wash it. But... Mm -mm. It was a bad day. Try so. not to gag challenge. Pretty much, yeah. Um, except there's no happy ending in the end. Um, so, yeah. Don't think about that one too hard uh, for the young younger members of our audience. Uh, teacher's con is 30. I mean, honestly... Well, the dude's like 61. He's like a year... He's less than a year away from his retirement. Uh, he's fucking... He doesn't give a shit. He reads off his PowerPoints. He's one of those teachers that doesn't explain anything, doesn't know anything, and has never ta uh, actually had a practical job in the field. He's always taught, so he went straight from you know his master's to teaching. And I can't. I I have 45 formulas I have to memorize, and I was posted in the other chat. I think about this. About I think it was like 30 of the formulas he gives us. He doesn't explain what the variables are, and you can't find them in the books. So, and Can we, we I did, um, I went on Investatopia, which is what typically is common for a finance student, especially in an, inv in an investment class. Fi Investatopia is like, I don't fucking know. Oh, oh, Khan Academy luckily had a bunch of videos on it. So I was able to find stuff on there. Rule of advice. If you're going to college, make sure you pick your teachers well and make sure you know what you're going into. <sighs> Especially because I already failed one midterm. I don't need to fail another because of that guy. Oh, man. All right. One last repeat for this for those who are just really joining in. Um, again, today is going to be a short session. We're only doing about an hour. I'm still sick, as you can kind of hear my voice because of uh, my nose being very backed up. I'm also kind of stoned, which is not also not a good combination. So um, we're going to try our best here and... Uh, play some D&D, &D. Um, and the players have the chance to take advantage because, the, as Grim Legacy can tell you, the only times I'm in a very good DM and like to give my players shit is when I'm stoned off my ass, which only happens has happened twice in my entire time of DMing. So, yeah, pretty much, that's, that's accurate. <laughs> Alright, so last time we left off, um, since it has been a weekend uh, from it, uh, we... 
brain fart. Give me a, okay. <laughs> this is how bad, you know, and I've been studying doing it before this. Um, last time we left off with the group hanging around the port city, doing some light adventuring and walking around. Whoever cures the DM of his sickness gets a bright point. Honestly, if you can make me immune to whatever the fuck's going around that uh, Kramer Hall, then yeah, I'll give you as many bright points as you want. I'll make you the fucking high king of this world at this point. Ugh. Um... So yeah, last time we left off, the group was hung, uh, hung around for a bit longer. With uh, main point, uh, the main story point at this point being that uh, Zaya was captured by her uncle or her grandfather. God, this is why we're only doing an hour today. Dolkin getting irritated uh, by this and trying to save her, taking a level 15 fighter with a couple of levels in warlock, um, and Dolkin managed to bluff his way into doing some pretty good damage overall on this guy um not for especially because the dm didn't realize that he was almost dead <laughs> as dolkin got the crud kicked out of him and then zaya's grandfather being a terrible dice roller that he is due to his old age um managed to cut his granddaughter's head off and then use a couple of spells to fix her back up uh, it's the arthritis, yeah. And now Zaya's gonna have a permit kink in her neck. Um, unfortunately, due to this, the party or the uh, grandfather and Dolkin's uncle ran off, taking Zaya aboard their ship. However, fortunate, Dolkin found out that the uh, grandfather was heading towards the same location to make allies of the Dwarven Empire in the New World, and therefore is the same place that supposedly Conrad is taking the party. Um,. Meanwhile, E2 and Ven are, were still fighting, and E2 is very upset about the current situation of her being stuck in a woman's body that she did not approve of, um, all thanks to Ven and his conniving ways. Um, and Ven is now paying for it by being yelled at and basically whipped left and right. Um, Zaya, in the background, is still praying that she can steal uh, E2 away from Ven as the love triangle continues. Meanwhile, poor Dolkin is just trying to get a drink and get some shit done. And no one knows what Advil is doing at this point. Alright. Um, the cure is castration, is what Tren says. That is not the case. But good try, Tren. Ah. Alright, so... We begin once more as the party um, returns back into the tavern. Dolkin coming in beaten up badly. Uh, the barkeep handing him a few potions to heal him up that give him almost a, the exact thing of a full night's rest um, on the house after watching the fight and making a couple coins off of Dolkin's uh, loss. Uh, Advili still enjoying their salad. Zaya now unconscious on a dwarf's back being carried onto a ship to be taken away to a foreign land. It's usual for her. And Ven and E2 sitting at the table, uh, dealing with their own personal emotional issues and Ven's conniving ways of uh, cheating his girlfriend into becoming a changeling so he can make her his queen. No. <laughs> All right. Wrong. And we pick up. It is the evening. It's around 5 p.m. at this point. A lot of the streets are, seem to be livelier outside as people are entering the taverns. Uh, the ship with Zaya on it is long gone, uh, having left port that morning after Dokken uh, heroically did everything to take make his last stand against the old man. And you lot are now able to relax in the tavern as it's getting busier and busier. Um... And yes, the barkeep and the wenches seem to be working fervently. The smell of smoke is on the air as a bard is singing songs left and right about a battle in the gnomish lands and a wall crumbling while a single hog held his ground against an army of the thousands. Uh, the overall... Um, God. Ah. Uh, Apologies, guys. I'm still suffering here. Uh, the overall feeling seems to be one of happiness amongst the uh, outside of the party, amongst the customers that are here, chilling out. And yes. So, is there anything you guys would like to do minus Zaya? Because, well, Zaya is gone right now. Well, oh. <sighs> There's supposed to be someone in the new world that can help it too, so. And Ben is completely yeah, let's freaking go broke. Do that, huh? Yeah, we're gonna go do that. No question. 
right. Any questions? That's Anyone it? else want to try and stop it? Let's go. No? Okay, we're all going. Come on. We're dragging those problem in. Time. We'll start with this one. <laughs> all right. Conrad looks to you lot and completely confused on what's going on as he was drinking the entire time while Dolkin was out uh, going toe to toe with the head of the House of Silver Song. <sighs> So he has no idea what's going on at this point, besides the fact that Dolkin came in looking like he got the crud kicked out of him um, and has been kind of just sitting there watching Advali eat his salad and wondering how a pink, hu uh, a pink person could exist in the world. <sighs> so, yeah. So you guys are... Um, okay, so what's the plan exactly now at this point for you guys? We are going... Conrad and say we need to go to the new world, but we might not join his army, but we'll definitely help out where we can. So the fact of it got cursed and is now Conrad looks at you lot and says, Oh I'm sorry, my boat's reserved for one way only. I'm going to the Dwarven Empire. I'm not making any pit stops. I have orders uh, by we'll the find king. Our way from there. Well We'll find our way anywhere else from there. That's fair, but you have a job to do. By joining me, you are already pretty much contracted to work with us. I don't give free rides. I did I? I didn't say we wouldn't, did I? I just said we might not. It looks fair. And having someone, Go ahead. having someone who isn't in the army means that they can do things that someone in the army such. So the old guys <laughs> are the fact of leader okay. now. Go ahead, and Dolkin. Holly, I will send you out a goddamn way. I mean, you... I don't know what that is, as I point to uh, E2, but when did you start growing balls and making orders around here? The second you started looking more like a pussy bitch. Bye. <laughs> oh, snap. Says the one that gets shot on by his girlfriend and unable to do anything. <laughs> What a loser. Yeah, it really is. Conrad just looks completely confused. Says, Alright, here's the deal. You guys are doing the job that, I, uh, that I've offered to give you a ship right for. Ain't no other challenge. Uh, uh, no, ain't other. Uh, uh, ain't no other choice in this matter. What's the job again? You're gonna help the dwarves reclaim their territories against the Orcish. Uh, the United Orc clans. As... I don't have time for that, buddy. I gotta get fixed. Shit. He looks at he looks at D2 and says, "I think you mean spade, but uh." Not that way. <laughs> no, she means the car. Stupid fucking. He looks to Ven and says, oh, "You do you want to step up now, little man? I don't care how old you are. I'll cut you down from head to toe." Had that happen a few times. It wasn't fun. Rather not go through it again, because the last time it happened, more for Yawn, yawn. Let's continue. <sighs> Conrad glares at Put Ben. Put that off. Anyways, your jobs are as required. What you do in the meantime, or what you find, I don't care. You're looking to remove that curse? Well, here's an idea. Why don't you see if there's a mage or something in the Dwarven Lands? Fair. Now, if no one has any other arguments, we head out at sun uh, at sunrise, and I'm retiring to bed, as today seems to have been a long day, and listening to you lot bicker is not on my agenda. He put, tosses a bag of coin to the uh, uh, barkeep and just points to Dolkin and then walks off. Kind of signaling that all the drinks are on him that Dolkin has. Oh. You want to go back up to the room? It's at this point that E2, is, by the way, is back to her changeling form. Oh, shit! I gotta run! <laughs> I and put I the cloak over it. E2. E2 runs off. <laughs> As everyone Ven sees a shade of gray. After. Okay. With Ven chasing mm. after. Alright. 
Dokken and Advili, you are the only two left in the bar at this point. There are a lot of happy customers that are drinking and singing songs along with the bar, uh, along with the bard at the uh, front of the tavern, enjoying themselves. Where where did E two run? Back upstairs into a room. Don't think that you're getting in. <laughs> yes, Dokken, what what's your idea? I'll just I'll take a, take a tanker and you just go sit outside the door. Outside her door or outside the tavern? Outside of her door, kind okay. of like a guard. Okay. So as you grab a tavern, or a tavern, wow. Um, as you grab a <laughs> fucking glass, oh, I can't talk tonight. Um, full of a deep brown ale, walking up. Uh, the barkeep kind of smiles, now knowing that he just made a good profit off of you of not having to buy, or, or all that coin being kept that you didn't spend. Um, and you head up, pull up a stool that you find at the end of the hallway and sit out front of the door hearing Ven getting yelled at by E2 for, because, you know, the argument has continued. Advili, you're the in t the only person left, uh, in the, bo in the tavern itself. Uh, what's your plans? Okay, I take a swig and then, well, just gulping it down and then just partying along. All right. As you enjoy the night, it's a quiet, calm night overall with customers coming in and out. Mixture of humans and such. Um, at one point, Advil, you do see something kind of strange that catches your eye, but you kind of dismiss it out of uh, more understanding. Um, you happen to catch the eye of a gnome who seems to be walking around. Um, or at least you assume it's a gnome or a halfling due to the height uh, being around three feet. Um, as a pointer, Zopip's taller than three feet. Um, just so you know, don't freak out, Zaya. Uh, and the person uh, seems to catch your interest only due to the, the difference in height, as most of the customers in here seem to be dwarves or humans um, that seem to be traveling through the area. Uh, they also seem to have a bit of scale on their uh, one of their arms, as in like their arm looks like it has a uh, dragon like scales um, for skin. Okay, um, I guess throughout the night I will try and converse with the gnome to see if he can talk. Oh, he walks up, as you walk up, um, after about an hour of watching the guy, he seems to order a drink and just kind of watch the entertainment, um, kind of enjoying and singing along on occasion. <laughs> um, what do you want to say when you go up to him? Do I note it? Like, is the scale scaly arm visible to everyone? Um, somewhat. It's only uh, it's only slightly noticeable if you're actually looking to the fact that how his cloak is set up. It does seem to cover his arm for the most part, but you can kind of tell it. And it seems to come off as a bright red scale. Okay. Um. I just give off a good. Hey, man. Uh, uh you're new to these parts. He looks at you for a second, and as he looks up, you see that he has a long golden beard. Um, and it's at this point you get a better look of him. He has uh, go uh, bright golden eyes, and seems actually to be a, actually a short dwarf. Um, in fact, not an, actually a gnome, from what you can tell. Due to the fact that gnomes don't typically grow facial hair of this magnitude, the beard actually starts to come out of the cloak um, and hit the floor, and seems to be pretty solid looking. Uh, he just smiles at you, nods, and says, Well, I'm not exactly new to the area. I've, I'm from here. Uh, you could say I, uh, I've i done some work around these parts. Mm. Do you forge or anything? Oh, no, no, no. I'm no forger. I was a, a warrior at one point. Uh, used to travel along with this uh, band of misfits, but now one of them's a king. The other went insane. God knows what happens to the others. Uh. Boy. And he just kind of orders a tankard, continues to drink. Um, you notice that, like, as you get a better look at him, he's wearing typical scale mail of what would be a common of a like a warrior. Um, simple armor overall. Seems to have a shield on his back, a sword, um, and 
Uh, the only thing that catches your eye is one of his left hand, while the right seems to actually have scales on it, the left seems to have a weird blackened um, coloration to it. Like, not as in, like, the skin is darker, but more as in the skin looks like it's dead, almost. So, uh, see that you got that, um, red on you, and the very, uh, what looks to be dead skin on you. Aye, that was a, a nice gift from our mage in our group. He looks at de- the hand that you think is probably dead as he flexes the fingers barely. And pulls out uh, the scale. Well, let's just say uh, I've been through a lot. But so I'm honestly dragons just... dragons lately? No, no. Dragons are good people. Plus, they've been dead for a long time. So uh, I've only heard rumors that a few have been spotted as of recent. Honestly, I'm just traveling through these parts, kind of going town to town, seeing, making sure there's no jobs available. Uh, you know, and heard this place was pretty rowdy, saw the fight going on with, uh, some dwarf and a pretty tall tiefling, surprisingly. Much older, though. Oh, pretty good really? fight. Yeah. Thought I'd come in here when I saw him take off, but I had to take care of some things. Some woman tried to trick me out of my goods, but thankfully I was smart enough to avoid her baked goods. <laughs> and yeah, you know, it's just another day. Uh, he kind of go, downs the, the flask or the glass and sets it back down and says, but if you ever see a kind of a tall looking human, I don't know, like seven feet tall, kind of a bigger guy in like a warlock outfit, let me know. I've been looking for him for a while. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, Got any names I need? Got any names I need to figure out? No, no, I don't remember his name, to be honest. Well, I don't remember much of what happened after the battle that we were part of. Oh, my memory's still pretty rough. Got the crap smacked out of me at one point, but yeah, no. I remember something about an elephant at some point, but I, these days, who knows? I've been on too many quests. And he kind of sets the glass down and gets up and says, Well, I bid you adieu. I'm off for the night. I've got to go back to my sleeping quarters up in the upper class district managed to sneak my way into an abandoned little manse which is a nice little place hmm. but yeah. well if you're interested um me and my group was about to go out and head to the dwarven lands that's open to the new world that has happened with the giant earthquake and all that so if you're interested in joining with us that'll be cool he just looks at you n- n- uh i'm too old for this <laughs> and turns around and walks away <sighs> you just hear him sigh as he as he opens the doors and lets them shudder behind him and leaves. First, off character, fuck you, DM. I kind of figure out who that is. Second, uh huh. On character, um, I just go back to uh dancing and well, occasionally singing along during right. the night. As you enjoy yourself and the night continues on, patrons come and patrons go. Nothing of really interest um, at all. Some uh, short gentleman comes in selling a couple of uh, trinkets here and there on, uh, in the form of necklaces. But otherwise takes off after a few failed sales, um, ignoring mm. the whole situation. And then otherwise it's been quiet. So okay. as the night goes on, you eventually retire to your room at around one in the morning, realizing that there's not much else and the tavern becomes slowly rather dead as those few left are more drunk than they are coherent. Dolkin I... passed out upstairs. Yes, go ahead. Oh, I was about to say, um, I kind of don't want to retire because well, so since I, I, I know I've been having, I know I've been like um, downstairs, like partying and all that. Like, can I just like, Instead, go outside and like take, like get the breath, uh, breath of fresh air in, to at least sober myself up first before retiring for the. Night. Yeah. So as you head out, um, yeah, nice breath of cold air as you realize the months are starting to turn, weather is starting to get worse, um, and the air is starting to get chillier out there. You see a few drunks walking around, a couple of brawls that seem to still be happening in the street every once in a while, and otherwise it seems almost completely. Peaceful and quiet as the boat slowly rock uh, in front of you. 
As you head back upstairs after a, taking a sobering breath and a little bit of a walk to wake, kind of get yourself ready for bed, uh, you see Dolkin sitting in a stool that he uh, right in front of E2 and Ven's room, passed out with the glass kind of laying on the ground as uh, right below his hands, completely unconscious at this point. As uh, eventually he did fall asleep, you can hear the soft snoring of what you assume is probably E2 and the annoyed. Uh, ch- uh, clamoring and finger tapping of Ven as he continues to stay up thinking about what he's going to do. Uh, to Since not. I get... only need to sleep for four hours a night. Yeah, and to not get killed by his girlfriend. Um, retiring to your room, it's rather quiet overall, and the evening goes on. The next morning, Conrad comes out of uh, Conrad and Dolkin's room, waking you lot up, letting you know that he plans to ship out in an hour. Sun hasn't risen yet as he uh, pokes Dolkin awake, knocks on Advali's door, and kind of leaves E2 and Ven alone as Dolkin's standing in front of the door, assuming that he will pass on the message. I'll, I'll knock on E2's door. Alright, as Ven is the only one awake, E2 is still asleep mm, at this point. No! no. Ben, don't ben, do it! Don't do it! I'm gonna answer it without opening it, be like, yeah? You, you both still in there? Um, well, if you slip in front of the door like I thought you did, then, yeah. Okay, that's good. They want another kidnapping. We're leaving <laughs> in an hour. <laughs> okay. I'll make suddenly, sure the glass, suddenly the glass breaks, and E2 is screaming as she's pulled out the window. No. Um... <laughs> and then Zerwin starts breaking someone's neck. Um, all right, taking a moment to jump over to Zaya. Zaya, as you're uh, suddenly coming to the smell of the sea salt on the air, you find yourself uh, full, uh, not chained, not gagged, um, fully fine, uh, perfectly fine in fancy nobleman's clothing. You have a nice. God, my uh, neck. <laughs> uh, you have a nice deep silver um, dress overall uh, or on now, um, one that is befitting uh, someone of your status. Um, according to the House of Silver song, along with the sigil of Silver song uh, sewed into it, you see a few crewmen walking about. Uh, you can obviously tell that this is a boat as it rocks back and forth, and you can smell the strong sea uh, salt on the or sorry, you can smell the strong scent of water on the air. Um, and yeah, uh, crewmen keep walking by. Your grandfather is nowhere to be seen. Um, neither is the uh, dwarven um, butler of his, well Smith. Um, that was with him. So, yes. Can I... I'm gonna go to the nearest crew member and be like, where is my grandfather? As you get up, you walk over, you see... Uh, as you take a look, you realize that the crewman has the um, burned emblem of Silversong in, on their chest. And as you get a closer look, every piece of their body seems to be stitched. Oh, Great. Can... Does, do they seem to be able to comprehend what I'm saying, though? It doesn't even seem to look at you, as it still it bends over Lovely. to pick up a few things. Of course, I'm surrounded by surely more mummified crew members, parties who knows where, grandfather's not to be found. Lovely. Uh, do I have everything on me, like all my items, all my equipment? Nope. You have nothing on you other than the dress itself. Not even my instruments. Nope. The, gosh darn it! Wait, did he take the teleportation ring off yep. my finger? Gosh darn it! This is, ri- uh, all right. Do uh, can you? Where am I? Like from what you can tell, on based on the boat, you're below the captain's quarters in the bottom of the boat itself. Um, in what would be considered a brig. Um, for a small ship. You'd guess this is probably a little bit smaller than a warship, but or a galleon, um, but not by much. Can I do an arcana check on the area? Sure. Go ahead and give me an arcana I want to see if I'm being magically held here, because I clearly came here without my will, and there's crew members around, but they seem mindless, and I have no chains. Mm-hmm. So, let's see. No, 13. All right. Um, as you uh, investigate the cage, I assume is what you're looking at specifically to see what's going on. Um, yep. There's no magic. It's just a normal iron cage. 
And mm-hmm. yes, the crewmen do have a strong magical presence to them. It seems that uh, yeah. whoever's uh, or whatever has caught them, they are some sort of flesh golem. Yeah, necromancy probably. Tiefling problems. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do I have any useful spells? I don't know. That's not for me to decide. Yeah, I'm looking. I don't think I have anything that could break an iron cage. Can I tell what time of day nope. it is? It's too no. dark down here and there are no windows. Too dark down here, no windows. Lovely. Um I huh. The iron cage could um, start licking how, the how, how like sturdy or new does the iron look? Like does it look like an old cage or Nope. A new cage? This looks brand new, well forged. Yeah, of course, of course. Keeping the bird locked in her cage. Um, is there message? Ben Zorin, don't you recommend her licking can the I... iron bars? Go ahead. Um, can I? I want to try something. I want to cast detect thoughts. It says for the duration, I can read thoughts of certain creatures. Cast spell on your action, your turn. You can focus your mind on any one creature, seeing within 30 feet. The creature you choose has intelligence of three and lower. Doesn't okay. speak any language. The creature's infected. I want to like see if I can detect the presence of thinking creatures I can't see because I can do that with a spell within 30 feet of me. Uh, so I want to see if I can detect the thoughts of any maybe non flesh golems around. You suddenly get start to hear or feel the thoughts of someone, and the message that seems to come across from her is, she looks like she'd make a good meal. You're not sure, um, though, where it is exactly. It is within 30 feet around you. Does it look like any of the flesh golems are nope. eyeing me up? No. None, from what you can tell, none of the flesh golems have the uh, intelligence to do this. In fact, um, flesh golems do not have uh, intelligence. To that degree. Right. Is there... Okay, everything was taken off of me. Correct. I can't do that. I was going to say I try to lockpick my way out, but I don't have any tools for that. All right. Um... Seduces lock. Seduces... I mean, how sentient are the flesh going? They are, from what you'd guess by looking at them, it's simple magic. These things are basically just barely above a zombie. Alright, I actually, I want to use Thaumaturgy, the cantrip, and I want to make my voice boom louder. Okay. And I want to call out, can I please speak to someone who's actually sentient here? Like, comprehending here, please. Thank you, I have many questions. Oh my god, my neck. What happened? <laughs> Um, as you, you noticed your hair is a little shorter too. Now it seems to be cropped off at the base of your neck. Uh, <laughs> uh spells oh, don't wow. seem to be able to fix that portion. Oh, wow. Not even my hair was good enough for my grandfather. Uh, <laughs> now you have almost a boy's cut or a lot shorter crop top. Um, I think she can't see a mirror. As you shout out, um, you suddenly notice off in the far dark corner, golden eyes are staring at you. Golden eye. Okay. Uh, can I make out the size of the eye? Um. What? Uh, okay, something's going on in the other chat. Um. So, uh, by the looks of it, whatever it is, it seems to be roughly about three feet tall. Three feet tall. With Hello, big golden are... eyes. Hello, are you? Someone I can actually talk to that's going to be able to respond and hold a conversation. Well, I don't imagine I could with something as simple as you, but I mean, I can, we can give it a shot. Do you have any idea they... where my grandfather is? Your grandfather? No. You're on a ship heading towards my homeland, actually. Your homeland. The New World. Mm, you call it new, I call it the old. Uh, 
How long have we been traveling? I have no reason to answer that. Mm. Well, can I ask how long you've been on the ship? Since the ship was crafted. Hmm. I don't suppose you witnessed the fight between my grandfather and a dwarf, did you? I have not seen a single other tiefling in the entire time I've been on this boat. And as you start to look around, something starts to come to realization. There's a strong magical presence all around you. Oh, boy. From what you can tell from your earlier uh, Arcana check, um, just to reapply that here to make it easier, someone's using um, some sort of illusionary spell. Drat. What? The man with what I thought to be a dwarf who kidnapped me and took me to this ship, what is he really then? Well, I mean, you tieflings aren't men, but I would say a connoisseur of many exotic tastes. I am a bird in a cage, aren't I? Well, one could make that association. I would say more like a lunchbox, but that works too. Lunchbox. lunchbox. Yeah. Oh, great. Cannibals. <sighs> It's only cannibalism if it's your own your own species. Is this man, woman, creature pretending to be my grandfather? Nope. Is he from the New World? You can't tell. All you see is golden eyes. No, I meant the the. I was oh. asking him the question. Like the supposed cannibal who kidnapped me, pretending to be my fa grandfather. Is he from the New World? New? Well, your world is the New World to us. Your world. Sorry. Hmm, I don't know. I imagine the rest of your party is already being led to their doom themselves, so who knows? Led to their... Oh, you, you manlings, you such mortal beings are so easy to trick and convince to trust one another. We send one of our kind with a cheerful smile, the ability to charm people, and suddenly everyone falls for him and is interested. Are you not mortal, then? Well, mortal is so to speak. I bleed like any other, but I am much more... a much higher being than your such fragile selves. But your friend, and since it really doesn't affect us at this point, and he thinks for a second, although I am monologuing, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> Ah, uh, but your friend Conrad will all re will be delivering the entrees here soon. So, is this whole forging, uniting of our worlds just caused by you so you can gather entrees? No, it was a lucky coincidence. Someone broke... Someone apparently used some high magic. I don't personally know the spells themselves that caused it. I just know that a large earthquake was heard out, and my people were sent out immediately on missions to traverse and see what was going on. And, well, when we found a new source of food and interest, we began using our own abilities to take advantage. And luckily, you lot don't seem to have my species in from your realm. Uh, I want to look at something. It's around I'm this point that, as you're this. as you're chat as you're thinking about the whole thing, you notice that there's the the illusion seems to somewhat dissipate a little bit. You're still on a boat, but you start to see in the other cages as you look around. There are four other cages. One seems to have a um teleportation circle in it um, with uh, that seems to be kind of smeared and screwed up with what looks to be a bony person or a person made of only pure bones you if you had to make an assumption you'd assume a lich of some sort or a skeleton um, and the second person seems to be a human female uh, that is dressed in men's armor oh no completely Wait. unconscious unconscious so the illusion, as I'm talking, this thing is starting to dissipate slightly. piece by piece. Yeah. So am I not really on a boat? You are. 
house, but it's hidden. <laughs> Why was I taken personally? I'm not sure what I have that's so interesting. And I'm gonna like I like the bony figure that appears to be like a lich. He looks to you, the golden eyes finally stands up, and you notice this thing towers somewhere around between six foot to seven feet tall. Um, mm -hmm. but it's still completely only just a pair of eyes looking at you from the shadows. And he looks to you or it looks to you and smiles with a gleeful look in its eye. And just Well, from what I can tell, you were the leader of a group that we deemed dangerous. That one as well, although she's not the leader we were hoping to catch, but the other one we failed to, and we had to retreat. That one, I believe you know it as a uh, grimacing, oh, I don't know, legend, something like that. Uh, I don't know, that I... she's supposed to be of w note. Can I do a history check on that? Sure. Okay, hey, Doki, good rolls, please. Nice. Okay. Okay, I got a twenty. Not natural. Uh, you that that sounds yeah. pretty similar to Grim Legacy. Grim Legacy. Okay. Your uh, from your history thing, you know that 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 means that's probably Aaron, the leader of the the unofficial leader of the group, <laughs> who seems to be missing a lay a full left leg. Um, part of their right arm and, um, their entire right, oh, their entire right forearm and hand. And seems to be unconscious. You say the group I led, and I put that term lightly, uh, is dangerous. How so? I would say we were pretty ineffective as a good mercenary group. Well... Your cousin started a war amongst the gods. Your other cousin stupidly died, um, being greedy. Or your brother, I should say. Um, but you mm. lot have managed to stir up a lot of trouble. You had a hog amongst you that caused some sort of crack that we could feel even over near us. And from what I can tell, you have someone amongst you that can craft do doors to different dimensions, and he is of value to us. Different dimensions. And yeah. the immortal goes unmentioned. <laughs> the do he, we call, uh, he has been codenamed the Domain Smith. And you are going... We are dangerous to your organization, species, world. Well, mostly of... you are tasty, but dangerous is a good way to avoid you. Kill the early heroes, the threats, those who are of note. The one that you guys, you all think is of Conrad, is actually, was the real Conrad is a dwarven hero who does serve the king of the dwarves, um, or the Vedan, as you lot would know them. And you start to feel that your mind is being fully read. Almost as if your memories are being sorted through. Oh boy, is there any way I can try to resist Do you have this? a counter spell? Please tell me you took counter spell. I don't know. Then there wow. is nothing that you can do to resist and this. I'm only wow. a third level spell. Yep. Um, so he, you can feel his your thoughts as suddenly the creature takes shape of what looks to be Zilpip. With the only difference is instead of purple Wait. eyes, they have golden eyes. I thought I only ever saw. Oh, I guess Zilpip it looks like this. Yeah, they're identical. Um, and he shrinks, the figure shrinks down to the same size, looking identical. The albino skin, the purple eyes, the white hair, the generally mischievous appear look on his face. He says, this form seems to be a bit more pleasant than the associated forms that were around, so let's go with this. Unless you'd rather me take the form of your brother, the one who was shot full of arrows and bolts. I would not prefer that or would one choose and he suddenly changes to a tall uh, a medium height elven wench 
and he smiles at you. You recognize Alluvia. Oh, shit. We have been watching you lot ever since the beginning of this. My people are always fascinated with your people. In fact, we're invading your homeland right now. Are you behind the hunger I've heard about in the Tiefling lands? The hunger, the war, the fights, yes. The one who played your grandfather was speaking the truth, although your grandfather died a very pitiful death begging on his knees while we chopped pieces of him off and consumed them at, at dinner. In essence, or in your terms, he died like a little bitch. Whoa! <laughs> Damn! And wow. So is there a God's what have situation have we gotten into? And with that as you start to contemplate the figure turns and leaves up the stairs. Wonderful. Alright, and we go back to the other the rest of the party. As you lot wake up heading towards the ship. Um, gathering together. Arriving on the ship, you see Conrad has uh, chartered a crew. It looks of regular basic humans. Um, basically getting everything set up, uh, loading full of supplies and trade goods and the lot. And smiles and waves at you lot as you arrive, um, beckoning you onto the ship. And yes, the, as the day, morning uh, seems to come, it's a chilly morning, but clear blue skies, the sun on your backs... It's only doom if we die. I think Dolkin knows exactly what these are. Um, and yeah. So as you out, uh, get on the boat, uh, is there anything you guys want to do as you uh, pull up? Well, I'm um, looking about to see if uh, the man that I saw is anywhere. In the gnome? No, you don't see him anywhere. Eh, I or just the, shrug it the off. The golden then. dwarf, I should say. Yeah, uh, I just shrug it off then and get on the boat. Um, uh, I'm gonna keep it to covered best I can with a cloak and lead her on board. Okay. So, like, I'll catch us still anyone around the ship, but right now is probably not the best time. Uh, um, I have to check something, because there might be actually something that I'm forgetting, and this might be really bad or really funny. Um, one sec. Oh, well, I kind of have a pact with the Kraken, but I can really do nothing. Well, the ship. There is something that paladins get, and I'm just curious about it if he if it's there. If he was a oath of the ancient paladin, then he would have had undying snow, which means he. No, that's not what I'm looking for. No, okay. okay. I didn't know if you the oh fuck what is it sense evil or whatever hell that spell yeah, is called for clerics. Evil. Yeah, I was looking the for that. Evil. Yeah. Okay. So as you like get on, um. Dolkin, is there anything you want to do that then Advali has kind of spoken? Uh, no, I'm just following along with the group. Okay. As you get on, the crew seems to um, appreciate you, Dolkin, and seems to a few of them smile and give you a wave, toss you a few um, small little flasks as they've heard about your notorious drinking. Uh, one tosses you a baked cookie um, and laughs. He's the is first it one raisin? To die. It's not raisin this time, no. But yeah, so otherwise it seems as though you get on, the morning is calm and relaxed, the ship seems fine, and nothing is amiss as you guys head out to sea. Conrad uh, immediately taking you guys around the Isle of Man and heading south. Well, southwest, to be uh, exact. And as you guys start heading down, about after four hours of travel, you notice that on the boat, or uh, in the distance, you see a bunch of islands, and... One of the things that you recall from the maps that you guys do have, or, well, Zaya had, of the world, is that the um, there are no islands in this area. Uh, below the Isle of Man, um, which is basically where you have gone, uh, there is not much there. It's just mostly open sea until you hit the uh, main body of ice that seems to uh, be, at both or be at one of the poles. Um, so there shouldn't be anything here at this point. Nine health is this? Sounds like Ven Zorwin is listening to E2 being upset with him. Um, 
So yes, as you guys continue on, um, I assume got some going and relaxing, um, chilling out. Uh, Advali and Dokken, when you head below deck, you do notice a figure um, down below. Advali, you recognize this figure immediately as a, the dwarf from the earlier day, from the previous night, sitting there hey. just chilling out with a uh, bot, what looks to be a bottomless flask. Yo, I didn't. I thought, how did you get here? How did you get here? Well, we. He raises an eyebrow. I suggested that you. Ha! Ah, young child. It's okay. One will learn to become wiser and understand the only way onto a boat is to climb aboard. As he gives you a big old smile. <laughs> you didn't know about this boat until I mentioned it the other day. That's true. But I did know about your friend here. I uh, see all oh, yeah. things. He looks but to Dokken. in search for him. Hold on. And he looks to Dokken and says, Ah! Dokken! I've heard so much about you. All good, I hope. Well... One of the uh, one of the very luxurious women I spent the night with uh, happened to mention you liked cookies, so I brought a few with me. And he I hands you a jar. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he just kind of watches and you leave. Yeah, well, I guess he's not a cookie person anymore. Yeah, you know, I he, you get your stuff stolen by a bunch of bakers once, and I guess you just don't you can't eat sweets anymore. It's unfortunate. Like they were uh, bakers' daughters. I thought they were whores. You know, you really are bad at understanding what people who people are. You misread I mean... a lot. Speaking of misreading, your group leader isn't here. Yeah. Um... About that. Yes. Uh, she got. Let's say she got fed up with us and decided to go on ahead. Hmm. That's fair. I uh, I could see that. I would be very upset with someone who also doesn't eat cookies. As Dolkin, as you walk up aboard, you suddenly find a cookie is sitting at the top of the stairs. I step on it. <laughs> and keep walking. As you step on it, the cookie crushes completely under your feet. You can smell rum coming off of it. Um, he looks to you. Uh, the man looks to you and says, "Well." I would introduce myself, but you can uh, just call me Shield for right now. Okay. <sighs> so, how do you know that? Well, besides me telling you, how did you know that this boat was about to leave? Besides following the smell of uh, baked goods and the young woman who's completely cursed that's traveling with you? Yes. Wait. He just smiles and says, You're very oh. ignorant of the world, my young one, but that is to be expected when one is newly born. Or, should I say created, as he gives you a big old smile. And the beard seems to separate. I start sweating a little. I start sweating a little. Ah, uh, do not worry. Your issue and your mission and your decisions are none thing to do with me, nor do I care of them. I am just a wise old man who tends to get up to more dangerous deeds than they have worth. Also, I made a I... stupid decision once. Piece of advice. Never take two rocks out of a box when they're both two different colors. God fucking dead right! <laughs> Why? My boy. My boy has returned. Hey, look. I knew it in the fucking night. <laughs> says, uh, but the reason I'm with you is because I am curious about what's going on. I have uh, interest in where you guys are heading. That's pretty I, much all. I lean back a bit and um, try to motion my uh, try to motion something in whisper. Yes. Uh, hang on. Let me uh, text it to you. Type it to me. Not text. You're not texting me. Oh my fucking god! You know what I mean? No, I don't. Cause you gotta mean what you say and say what you mean. All right. 
Uh, Doka, as you head back up aboard, the crewmen kind of give you a jostling jokes here and there, but overall seem to leave you be. Ven and E2 have retired down below as E2 still continuously hiding herself, I assume, at this point. Yep. I Actually, I want to... Yes, Doka? I want to try and find those two and ask them something. The so... two people... Oh, uh... The uh, e shield and Advly, or E2 and Ven? E2 and Ven. Okay. Uh... Don't come near me. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to stand outside the door like, hey, I have a, I have a question for you. All right. As you, uh, they'll talk oh, yeah. to me. Um, that's I, what I... So all right. Uh, as, you'll, you'll probably get stabbed, so be As careful. Dolkin knocks on the door and starts trying to get your guys' attention. He just just Rick of stay, stay the hell out, too. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. I'm, I'll stay out here. I just got a question. Is there something Zaya would have on her all the time? Probably. Like, specifically. Oh. Her tail. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that'll count. Something something that she like she carries all the time with her. Like, uh, oh. her instrument oh, well. that she plays. That wouldn't be too far from her, even if she was taken against her will. Sure. Alright. Yeah, that, that could work. <laughs> and then I'll just, like, okay, thanks. And then I'll just kind of find some place to stable on the boat. Alright. As you find one of the back little rooms, do you manage well, to nestle yourself uh, into a big pile of rope that's a lot more comfortable than you expected? Um, Alright. As Advili, as you uh, start to whisper, you notice that uh, the whisperer seems to go to nothing. Nothing seems to be standing. Uh, so nothing seems to hear you. And Shield just looks at you and waits. Patiently. I look, I look at the shield with a, con with a, uh, quiz with um inquisitive look, and then ask. So, you know her then. All do, all do not. Those in my positions have to. Interesting uh riddle. Not really a riddle, it's more of a analogy, but sure, let's go with that. And he just kind of looks about and says, I'll be honest, I don't give a damn. Your your life is too much of a complication for me to deal with at this point. Nor do I have any interest. I'm just enjoying the peace and quiet that I don't have to deal with the chaoticness of so many mistakes made. So, Shield, um, mind telling me about your party a little? Well, your former party? Well, one is the king of man now. One who tried to slaughter us all. Another tried to slaughter us all while I put up a, a nice little hut to protect myself. Made a good fortune off that hut. Um, let's see. Uh, memory, God damn it. Anyway, continue. Got, my, got the crap kicked out of me by a... Uh, person that was trying to rise to power tried to sleep with his daughter. His daughter tried to kill me and skin me alive. An elephant <laughs> fell on me. I, I fell on an elephant. <laughs> I watched an elephant get beaten to death with a um, giant mace due to some chocolate. Oh yeah, word of advice. Don't eat, ch don't eat chocolate strangers go for you. Um, let's see. Yeah. Don't, don't, um... Oh, and, I... uh, lastly, um, don't ever trust someone who is a warlock. That That's just better, that's life advice. Uh, he starts jotting off an invisible list. Uh, yeah, that, that's my party in a nutshell. Um, a bunch of idiots that were nuts and managed to get Fucked us all killed. a lot of things. But, I... sealed by the fold, if you're hanging around with those nuts, you... In turn, we're also a nut. I mean, I made a very dumb decision in pissing off the High King at one point uh, by deciding not to play by his rules and being the idiot that I was at the time and lacking in the common intelligence that is expected of one of my, lo my ability. I made a foolish decision that cost me much and more. While my friends rose to power beyond what I could expect, I decided to, instead of following in their footsteps to... Well, 
be an ignorant ass, to say the least. Huh. But, I digress. I will give you this little bit of fortune. As, as he looks down at his wrist uh, to the scale, uh, to the scaled hand, and says, You lot are going into a very interesting situation in which you could come out profiting very well. Or not. As they say, it could be glorious victory or in cowardly death. My advice here, never realize that not everything is as it seems, as you know so well. And he hands you a cookie and just vanishes into the shadow that suddenly appears in the well-lit room. I stare at the cookie. Then it has a giant golden hair on it. Bite the cookie. I, I would eat it. It yeah, it's it, it looks like a, to be a chocolate chip cookie with a giant golden hair. The cookie weighs a lot. Can I, can oh I God, I would eat this it. cookie. All right, roll investigation. Okay. Let's see. It's a hundred percent delicious. If Itu was there, she would eat it whole. Yeah, but I'm not Itu, so shush. <laughs> All right. Well then. She, she better share with that. Roll. Alright. Um, you realize Dolkin doesn't like chocolate chip cookies because he got his gear stolen by a bunch of baker's daughters. <laughs> <laughs> I hold on to the cookie. Alright, as you put the cookie in your bag with the long golden hair on it, it seems to actually you know weigh you down pretty heavily. It adds a pound of uh, gear. The cookie. Oh, that's another thing. Um, yes. I wanted to investigate the dagger that I had last oh. time. Okay. Roll investigation on that. Okay. Um, so as you uh, take a look at it, it seems like a normal dagger overall with a very strong magical presence to it. To it. The I... dagger is made of simple iron, the uh, handle is made of wood, but the gem at the top is made of a very um, well-cut ruby, something that had to be made by a professional jeweler or smith. Hey, Shield. Even He's though gone. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I'm, I, I know. I was, I'm was. i just, like, thinking out loud right now. Um, why does... It, do I know this ruby from somewhere or no? Nope. Huh. So why is there's someone that's being able to fight, learn death? Why does this hurt me so? As I stare at this and start thinking aloud. All right. Am I Dol am I in that same room or no? No, Dolkin, you you're in the room. You're in the room next door, sitting on a pile of rope. All right. <laughs> what? Avoiding all the cookies. Yeah. Well, he wanted to go off to a, a, his own little corner. All right, Dolkin, what did you want to get up to while you're uh? Off on your own. Um, at some point before, uh, like I turn in for the night, I'm gonna do a long shot look at object on Zaya's uh, instruments, just so I feel like I'm trying. Okay. But it's only a thousand feet, so I'm not expecting anything. <laughs> All right, give me a moment. Let me just look at something. You're doing locate object at what level? Uh, first or uh, second level. Okay. Um, it seems to be directly south of you, and towards the islands. And it's with. Sure. Mhm. Mm okay. Um. One sec. Uh... Okay. Yeah, um, from what you can tell, uh, the item is, okay, yeah, um, is south of you, what looks, by the feeling of, by the spell itself, it seems to be pointing to the island that you guys are heading towards directly. Okay. All right, uh, and Ven and E2, what did you want to get up to? Um, I can't do I'm anything. I'm going to study the curse. Um, you could train against me. I mean, I make a good, pretty good punching bag. Uh, Ven, what I did you... I started attacking you. 
Yeah, yeah let's train. We'll train against each other. It's primary it's, strength and whatnot. It's rough sex. All right, got it. Um, <laughs> when E2 decides to dominate Ven for out of irritation. Uh, <laughs> neither of you managed to gain any uh, or any ability score, but you uh, E2, you do feel better after beating the crap out of Ven. Ven, your bruises aren't healing. Oh, great. Oh, no. Um, uh, Ben, bad. are you okay? I don't think I am. This is bad. This is very bad. We can't both be cursed at the same time. Well, I was technically cursed to begin with. I know, but that was fun. kind of good. This you... is kind of bad. E2, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh -huh. One second. I think I we're gotta... all a little cursed. Ain't that accurate. I mean, Dolkin, you're cursed with the hatred of cookies, so I think that's enough <laughs> of a curse for you. Um, you notice something in Ven's beard. He's got a lot more gray hairs than usual. Oh god, you're getting old! <laughs> He's already old, what the fuck? <laughs> I that never noticed, but you're so freaking old! <laughs> well, I'm over 7,000 years old. That... I know, but you look worse than normal! Ouch. Feeling. Damn. <laughs> when the DM doesn't even have Let to roast finish. you. Alright. Uh, I'm now realizing... How, oh. With the knife. Uh huh. The realization <laughs> suddenly... Happened. Happened. And I'm gonna cast straight on that knife. And I'm gonna take my... I'm gonna have to deal with a lot of bullshit. A lot of... Alright. And as you lot start to come to some simple realizations... The party is heading towards what is the ominous doom of their uh, situation. Poor Zaya is alone in a cage. We will come back next time. Isn't that where you keep songbirds? When in the DM is not sick or ill. Thank you all for those who have watched. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, we will see you next time um, when I'm hopefully doing better and hopefully past two midterms. Um... So, thank you for joining us, and, um, yeah, I got nothing else. Bye. Bye.